This, ooh, this one's really good, okay? <laughs> I know, I told you, I get so excited. I just love it, okay? Hi, and welcome to the House of Valentina. I'm Valentina, and today we are going to have the best time. We are talking about how to use your old stuff to look new and how to make it feel new. Oh, we, I'm telling you, I've got so many tips. I'm gonna load you up today with tons of ideas for how to take your stuff that you currently have and completely transform it, reuse it, repurpose it. We're gonna talk about all of it. And in the end, I hope that it will really inspire you that you don't have to always have everything new when you're wanting to create a new look. And these tips should help you process through how to create this new room, new style, whatever it is that you're craving right now, I think you're going to be super inspired and I cannot wait to share all of this with you. So I consider myself a little bit of an expert because I have always been an experimental person. I've always been willing to try new things. And what I do is I a lot of times use what I have to create a completely different style. It's kind of an addiction. I mean, I really should probably do this less, but I'm able to pass along all of these tips to you because I've done it so many times. So I've been hearing lately things like, farmhouse is dead, farmhouse is gone. And I'm like, wow, there's gonna be a lot of people in this area that are gonna be in serious trouble if they don't want farmhouse anymore. <laughs> because down here in the South, farmhouse is a big thing, modern farmhouse, everybody's been doing it. And now if you're wanting to transition your space, whether it's for modern farmhouse or any other style, if you want to transition your spaces, a lot of times you look at everything that you've got around you and you're like, wow, do I really need to start completely over? What am I, how am I gonna afford that? What am I gonna do? What if I love these things? We're gonna talk about all of that today. So if that sounds like something that you're really interested, make sure you hit subscribe because we're gonna to continue to show you guys room makeovers, home makeovers. We're going to share our tips and tricks with you in the coming days about how to be able to recreate using what you have. You can also go back and check out our previous playlist where you can see how we've transformed our own home over and over again. And so often we're using what we have. And also don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you're excited about this and let us know down in the comments if you are excited about using your old stuff and making it look new. So yes, let's jump in, shall we? I know, I get so excited. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be so much fun. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even bring my coffee. I haven't even had coffee today yet, people. Okay, this is just how excited I get about this stuff. I just love it. I don't know, I can't help it. I love design, I love the home, I love the things, I think it's so much fun. So yeah, let's just jump in. First thing that I always do, and oh, I, I can I just tell you, I have a lot of guilt related to this one because whether I'm working on my clients' homes or it's my own, nobody likes having to take everything out of the space. But when you have been in your home or in your room, whatever space you're trying to make over, what happens so often is that your space, you see what's in front of you. And I would say that I have a very vivid imagination. I feel like I can imagine myself in almost any place. I just, I just can, I can see it. And a lot of people don't have that ability. And even if you do, it's just easier to just simply clear the space of as much as you can. You have really big pieces of furniture. Sometimes it's not realistic to take those pieces out, but you can clear most things out of the space and give yourself, give yourself a blank canvas to really look at. That way you can really see, this is what I do. I take everything out of the room, usually making my husband do it, which is why I have guilt. And I'm like, just pile it all up in the laundry room or go pile it up on the dining room table if I'm not working on that space. <laughs> Um, go put it in the garage for a minute because what I want to do, this is how I decorate any home when I'm working for a client. I take all their things out, right? And then we're putting the room back together. So we've cleared it and now we've got a station with all the stuff and you're able to really see it separated and you can separate yourself and you've now separated it from your room and you can more, you can just more clearly see what you've got to work with and really ask yourself, 
does this work with where I'm going? Can I transform this piece? And you can start processing through all the things that we're gonna chat about in the rest of this video. Probably the number one thing, even though this isn't tip number one, <laughs> the number one thing that I do uh, when I'm trying to use something old, old, something that I have, and I'm wanting to use it in a different way, I just change rooms. It's the simplest thing, but it's a little bit like a kid. I don't know if you guys have kids or not, but when my kids were really little, especially, they would have this toy and they would just get tired of it. They would never play with it. And I'm thinking about donating it because they literally don't play with it. And then they go to their friend's house and all of a sudden, it's amazing. They wanna play with the toy or we take the toy from their bedroom and we put it in the living room and all of a sudden it's a new thing. Even over this past weekend, we did that with our son. We had stashes of toys that he hadn't played with in months and we brought them to a different room and he's like, we couldn't stop him from playing. Couldn't even be bothered to go and see if his friends were online or anything. He was just having fun. And that's what your things will do when you pick them up and you take them to a completely different space. It's just how we are as humans. It just feels new when it's just somewhere different. And that's the easiest, cheapest little tip that you can use just over and over. Take your lamps, put them in the living room. Take your vase, go try it in the bedroom. Take your pictures that you have in the bathroom and try to see, maybe they'll fit in the living room or in your bedroom. Mix things up and take them to a different room and you will be amazed at how new they feel to you. I like to group them with other things. So what will happen a lot of times is, you know, let me show you for example. Right now, right here, I've got this stack of books and I've got this box. A lot of times I'll, my, I just get tired of seeing these things together. So I'm gonna take this box and I'm going to group it maybe with a different set of books. And now I've given myself a completely different look. So it really does matter how you group things together. It really does matter what you group them with. And a lot of times you can take something that's older and you can put it with just a different grouping of things and it will completely transform how it feels to you. It will feel brand new because it's now, it's created something new for you. And a lot of times we just get tired of seeing things. Oh my gosh, I, I don't know about you guys, but we, I just feel sometimes like I was working from home before all this pandemic stuff started. But I don't know about you, but I think like, I think a lot of us have been spending a lot of time at home and we just get sick of stuff that's good stuff, but we just get sick of it because we are looking at it non-stop. And I'm like, I'm taking out really good stuff, you know, out of my spaces and I'm like, this is good, but I don't wanna look at it. And so I'll take it out, I'll regroup my mind, decide if it does match the style that I'm going with, and then regroup it with something completely different. And it's like, oh, okay, I feel so much better. So think about how you can maybe play something that's light against something dark, maybe add a metal to it, and you can just kind of move things around and regroup them with different things and give yourself a completely different look with it, and it will make a tremendous difference. One of the other things that I like to do is I like to change the backdrop. So for a lot of people, that will mean that you will maybe be painting the walls. You could be wallpapering. If you've got things sitting in a cabinet, maybe paint the back of the cabinet, the back of your bookshelves. Think about all the different ways that you can change the backdrop that your things are sitting on. So if you have antiques, vintage items, things that have more patina to them. If you set them on a backdrop that feels older, maybe it's from a past style that you've enjoyed at one point, but you're ready for something new. If you just simply paint the walls, if you just simply repaper the walls with something that just feels a little bit more sophisticated, something that feels a little bit more contemporary, you will completely transform the pieces that are sitting there themselves because now they have a new backdrop. So think about all the different ways. You can stencil, you can DIY wallpaper. You don't let budget deter you from doing these things. Cause I think that a lot of times we're like, oh, but it's gonna cost so much money. You need a new space. If you're craving something new, changing the walls, a lot of times will give you an instantaneous fix. 
I won't be painting my walls to prove that point because I love this color. <laughs> I just love it. But I've changed even some of the pieces that are in the room because I don't want to change this color. So um, that's how I've kind of dealt with some of my own things where I'm like, I'm ready for something new. It's not going to be the walls. And in other rooms, I've painted out the rooms a completely different color. I did that in my sunroom. I was just like, you know, the furniture just does, it just doesn't look that great on the white walls. I think I want something different. So I painted it black and all of a sudden the white just really pops on it. I'm like, yes, now I love my sofa again. So it really can make a huge difference. This, ooh, this one's really good, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I know I told you I get so excited I just love it okay um, you can mix in contemporary pieces with your old stuff to make it feel new um, think about how you can take a lot of those accessories that we talk about so often on this channel some of your um, your brass knots I know I'm gonna say it again <laughs> It's gonna be the drinking game. You're gonna have to go back and watch the channel. And every time I say it on a video, yeah, you can have a Coke or, you know, a glass of milk <laughs> or something stronger. But anyways, yes, I love these kinds of things. And they are more contemporary. They're a little bit more modern. And they really can, when you put them next to something that's older, if that piece is stronger, it will carry the weight of maybe your coffee table or your bedside table. Think about maybe if you have an older lamp, but then you have maybe a glossy, more contemporary looking vase sitting next to it. You've given the room a really good lift. And those kinds of things will really transform the, the old stuff that you have because it will really help it to feel more updated. It will help you to feel more of the moment. And I've actually got our Amazon shops. I've, I've put all my favorites because I love to shop and source and it's just so much fun. So if you want to check those out, I believe I leave a link every time in all the videos down below to some of my favorites. So that way you can find them and shop them. Even if you don't buy the ones there, it'll give you an idea of what I'm looking for. And then you can say, oh, if I put that next to maybe my vintage picture frame, how will that completely change the way the picture frame feels? So yes, I'll leave the links down below so you can check everything out. Speaking of frames, one of the things that I like to do is I like to change the frame, reframe it, right? Uh, sometimes we just get so bogged down. I do the same thing. I took some artwork from my parents' house and I just put it up on the walls and I couldn't figure out what was bugging me. And I realized I didn't, I wasn't in, I wasn't personally enjoying the older frame with the older artwork. I really like to take older artwork, maybe something that has a bit of patina and some warmth to it. It's beautiful, but when it's in an antique frame, the whole thing just feels maybe just a little too old. And I know that's not nice. It's not nice to say that, is it? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, but you know what I'm saying? If you're wanting to have something that's a little bit newer or fresher, take the stuff out of the old frames and put it into something that feels a little bit more modern and then repurpose that frame to maybe put something that's more modern inside of it. And you can put those two things right next to each other even, or you can just put them in different rooms. They don't have to go together all the time. You can really just sort of make over what you've got. Look for picture frames at Target. I love their picture frames. I will literally, I'm gonna leave a link down below to the ones that I, I shouldn't tell you in case I need more, I shouldn't tell you. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it anyways, okay? And then I'll figure out something else if they all sell out. But I love when they have the big white matting and right now at Target, they have the, the best, they're so good. And I use them all the time. So it's got a lot of white matting and a modern frame. So then when you put something that's a little bit more vintage inside of it, it will just, it'll just transform it. It'll look so modern and so chic and you didn't have to get rid of your old stuff. Whoa, baby, I'm telling you, this one is so controversial. <laughs> okay, just, uh, I'm like, oh, leave me a comment either way, okay? I know it's controversial, but I paint almost anything. And I know that some people are so passionate. They're passionate about their brick. They're passionate about their wood. They're passionate about whether something is should be painted or should not. 
I don't understand who came up with those rules. And honestly, I don't feel the need to obey that one. That's That didn't come down from the heavens, okay? That is a man-made idea that there's something that shouldn't be painted. I don't believe in it. I just don't. I, I think that if you think that you will want it back to the original at some point, then maybe you should think about not painting it. <laughs> that's when maybe you shouldn't do it. But if you have a piece, maybe that's been given to you, that's been handed down, something you found by the dumpster, by the side of the road, something you found at a flea market, and it's really cool, it has a really great shape, but it doesn't match your decor anymore. It doesn't match the future that you want for your home. Why not paint it? And it doesn't have to be furniture. It can be vases. We just did a recent DIY where we painted out old canvases. We painted out a vase that I had. Why not paint what you have? Why feel like you have to be so confined? My mom, she has always been, oh, she's like, don't paint it, don't paint it, don't paint it. And I'm like, mom, it's getting painted. You, I, I have felt guilty for six months while I think about this. And in the end, I'm always happy when I paint it. So. Um, if you're the person that's not going to be happy once it's painted, then just don't, just pass. But otherwise, think about painting it because you can paint it any color. And then you could just paint it another color when you get tired of that too. So I love paint. I think it's a great tool. And I think that it can absolutely transform your old stuff to look completely new. We're back to the framing. Okay, so if you have cool old stuff. So my husband and I, we, we collected stuff that sometimes even now we're like, yeah, I mean, what am I going to do with this? I have a, a little piece of rock that I, I picked up when we were at the Great Wall and I probably shouldn't put that on video. Yeah, I don't think that we're supposed to take rocks from the Great Wall. Yeah, that's probably not. Maybe I should just cut that. <laughs> okay, so I have a piece of rock <laughs> from an undisclosed location. <laughs> and I've had it sitting in a, a little pot that I bought while we were in China and it sits inside of that and every now and then I pull it out and show the kids, look, there's this rock. Well, we, we have all kinds of little things that we collected. We have like little um, trinkets and things and a lot of times what we end up with is, is maybe something little. We have something small. We have things that just don't really have a place. I don't want that stuff sitting out in, in my home. I, I just don't like the clutter. I end up putting it away no matter how much I'm like, oh, I'm gonna pull the rock out. It's not gonna come out. But I probably won't frame that rock. It's a little small, but you know what I'm saying. If you've gathered seashells by the seashore, if you have gathered coins, if you have cool medallions, I, I think that that kind of stuff can be really cool. Wow, I'm just getting to the point. Wow, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> if you have cool little things, if you frame them, then all of a sudden they become a lot bigger thing and you can frame your old cool stuff. Some stuff isn't going to be cool when it's framed. It doesn't mean that everything should go in a frame. Sometimes we take that too far. I mean, honestly, like if this is colorful and you're trying to create something that's really chic and sophisticated and it's something that you had when you were a kid, maybe a drawing that you made and it doesn't really fit the aesthetic of the room, maybe don't frame it, okay? Maybe just put it back in the box and put it in a really pretty box <laughs> on the coffee table and just store it. See, there's another tip. Uh, but otherwise, if it is something really cool that would look great in a frame, I always think Restoration Hardware, they are so good at this tip. They always frame little things and it always makes it look really cool. So think about framing it in a really modern frame. Something that's really clean lined, get lots of matting. I'm telling you, I'm going to leave the links for the frames that I love. And um, yeah, if you have something thicker, you may need a thicker frame. I used to buy those at Ikea, but I don't know if they have them anymore. They used to actually be quite thick. And so if you had something with some depth to it, it could still go in it with the glass on it. But if not, I'll try to find something that would be helpful. But sometimes you see them in a shadow box and that doesn't really maybe give you a modern vibe. And that's why I, for a long time, I just sort of gave up. But I think that if you have lots of big matting or you could have it custom made, maybe as a gift to somebody, really make use of that old stuff and frame it, make it look really cool.
Oh, I totally gave away my next tip by saying that, you know, stick it in a box, but it really is true. You can store your stuff, sort through your stuff, sort, go through it, decide what needs to stay. I mean, you guys are kind of, you know, you're all pros at that, right? You create your piles, this is staying, that's going. Um, but what about taking your stuff and sometimes you just need to store it. Sometimes you just need to have somewhere that you put it. You don't want it out. And I think that boxes are, boxes are my go-to. I'm like, do I have anything sitting in this box? Yep, I do. <laughs> I'm giving away all my secrets. Uh, cash for my kids when they want to buy something online. I make them pay me in cash and um, yeah, some mints. So this is not something that I want sitting out for everyone in the world to see. And um, I, I've got it stuck in a box so that you no longer see the, the things, but I haven't gotten rid of it. So sometimes a box can be a really great solution. Just be careful not to buy something too functional. If it's a plastic box with a lid, I, oh, how many pictures do you guys have stored like that? I have them like that. And instead what I did is I bought the really cool looking acrylic boxes that I was able to store my photos on. I don't have it up here right now to show you. I'll try to show you a picture. Those are great ways, nice big boxes. Store it in plain sight. Make it part of your decor and that way it's out. And if you have somebody that comes over and you wanna walk down memory lane, you actually pull the box out and open the lid and you've got all your photos, your mementos and things that you maybe wouldn't want out now they're a part of your decor and you're making good use of them so i think store it store it in plain sight if at all possible last but not least is to repurpose it i love to repurpose what i've got i have taken old shirts and turn them into pillows. I've taken curtains off, turn those into pillows, turn it into bedding. Um, what about boxes? You know, I've got, I've got this one sitting here, but I had other ones like this. They were just boxes that were sitting out. I used it to store my dryer sheets in the laundry room. I love to repurpose little bowls and things that I have in the kitchen. I might use them in my vanity area to store my rings. I think that it's great to repurpose what you have. You can sew it, pack it, recreate it, turn it into something completely different, use it in a completely different room for a purpose that it was not intended. I think that that's a really great way to use your old stuff. So whatever it is, think about how you can create something new with it. How can you repurpose it for something that maybe it wasn't originally intended for? I think that this is one of the best ways to use your old stuff because you just give it a completely different life. And now it's gonna last you for a lot longer. I think it's a ton of fun to take your cool old stuff, something that really means something to you and remake it into something that you just really enjoy for many, many years to come. So don't feel like it's an atrocity to take down your old curtains and use them for something completely different. Maybe you use the old curtains to become the backs of the new pillows, or maybe they are the front of the pillows, or maybe they are something completely different. I think it's a lot of fun. I think you can really make use of what you have and make something new that you just really love and enjoy for so many years to come. So. I've had a lot of fun today. I hope that you guys have too. I love to be able to repurpose, recycle, reduce, reuse, you know the drill. You've got cool old stuff, why not put it to use? If you are with me, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Let us know down in the comments what you're now thinking about. Thinking about in your own home, you're like, ooh, I need to do number three, or I need to do this one. I need to go try that one out. Ooh, I've got this thing that I need to move to a different room. Let me know down in the comments. I love reading your comments and hearing what you guys are doing in your own spaces and how you use the tips to get you inspired and get your creative juices flowing about your own spaces. Don't forget, we've got playlists you can also check out where you can see us making over our own homes and other spaces using some of our clients' stuff that they already have. And um, yes, lots of tips and tricks and playlists. We love to be able to give you something that's totally binge worthy. So make sure you check those out. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe. And um, yeah, thank you so much for stopping by. I always love when you guys come for a visit. It really is the best. I really do love it. So thank you again, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.